All praise to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone. Join me on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies program, and as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Holy Sabbath Day. Now with that, we're going to go ahead and get into our lesson, which is called The Few, the Proud, the Men of Yah. Okay, The Few, the Proud, the Men of Yah. And when I say the men of Yah, I'm talking about all the heroes that are in the Bible, whether it be a patriarch or a prophet, uh, a priest, uh, you know, a preacher, pastor, anything. Okay, all these guys who've actually doing the service of the Most High Yah. And I think we need to put a spotlight on, on, on these guys and look at some of the things that they had to deal with. Look at some of the things that they did in the day in honor to serve our Elohim. Now, before we get started, I'm going to let you know that I'm, I'll be reading primarily out the, uh, the scriptures version of the Bible, right? So we're going to go ahead and kind of graduate and expand our vocabulary a little bit and introduce some more of a Hebraic thought into our teachings, right? So we're going to incorporate some of that into our language, right? So again, this is the, uh, the few, the proud, the men of Yah. And we're going to start over in Romans 10, Ramayim 10. So we're going to do that and I'm going to go let's see here at verse 13 13 through 16 and it says for everyone who calls on the name of Yah shall be saved how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without one proclaiming or a preacher right so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and look at that so Again, now in here it, it puts the uh, tetragrammaton on there, you know, so it's like Yah, Yahweh, Yaho, you know, things like that. So just letting you guys know, I just say Yah for short, that way we, we know we're getting it right. Okay, so this is when it's calling upon some leaders. Okay, so how are how are people going to learn about the Most High? How are people going to learn about the Creator of the universe? And let someone teach them. Let someone proclaims it, preaches it, talks about it letting them know it's kind of like when Shaul Paul when Shaul went up to Mars Hill and he said let me tell you about this unknown God right so that's that's the only way we're gonna be able to get this thing if someone actually introduce someone to the creator of the universe right and the men of God they some of them hey some of them stepped up some of them was reluctant but they still did it at the end of the day his will shall be done okay so and he does it a lot by the men that he chose, the men that he calls out to come forward, right? So we're gonna go, we're gonna go uh, all the way to uh, 16. So 15, it says, and how shall they proclaim if they are not sent? And as it is written, how pleasant are the feet of those who bring good news or good tidings or glad tidings of peace, who bring the good news of the good news of the good. Okay, now, however, not all obey the good news uh, for Yesh Yeshiahu says, uh, Yah, who has believed our report, right? So not everyone, and that's that's the other thing. That's another thing that the prophets, the priests, you know, all, all of them, right? The pastors. That, that's that's the one thing is that one thing we know about Israel is that Israel is not going to listen all the time. There's not because he's saying, you know, who's who believes our report? It's like who's going to believe what we're saying, right? What we're reporting, you know, what whatever we say. Thus says the Lord. Not everyone's going to believe. You know that free will thing, boy. That's a double edged sword, right? And free will, that's nice. You, you know, we have some freedom. We can make our own choices and stuff. But how often do we make the wrong choice? How often do we make bad choices, right? You know, he said the power of um, life and death are in the tongue. He said, I lay before you, um, uh, before you life and death. Okay, blessings and cursings. And then he gives us advice. Therefore, choose life. And what do we choose so often? So oftentimes, what do we do? Right. We do it all the time. Make bad, bad choices, bad, bad decisions. OK, so let's go on over to the beginning. All right. We're going to go all the way to the beginning. We're going to go to Genesis or bear sheet. Genesis 14. Bear sheet 14. All right. And when we get there, we're going to start at verse one of bear sheet 14. OK. And it came to pass in the days of Amphriel, sovereign of Shinar, and Arioch, sovereign of Elisar, and Kedalo Orma, sovereign of Eliam, and Tito, sovereign of Goyim, right? So you're talking about the sovereign, you know, kings, things like that, your King James, in your King James Version. 
that they fought against Bera, sovereign of Sodom, and Bersha, sovereign of Amorah, and Shinah, sovereign of Adma, okay, and Shimabar, sovereign of Seboyim, Tesboyim, and the sovereign of Bela, that is Tozar, okay, Saar. All these joined together in the valley of Siddim, that is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served uh, Keterlaloma, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year of Keterlaloma, and the sovereigns that were with him came and struck the Rephaim in Asaroth, Kornaim, and the Zuzim in Ham, and the Emites in Shaway, Keredah. Kir, kir ya therim. Okay, you guys just bear with me a little bit. Getting used to reading, you know, Hebrew names, right? Hebrew names and terms. And the Horites in the mountains of Seir and far of El Param, which is by the wilderness. And they turned back and came to in Mispat, that is Kadesh, and struck all the country of the Amalekites. And also the Amorites who dwell in Hatzinson Tamar. And the sovereign of Sedem and the sovereign of Emorah, and the sovereign of Edma, and the sovereign of Tesboim, and the sovereign of Bela, that is Soar, went out and joined together in battle in the valley of Sedem against Ketelomwa, sovereign of Elam, and Tidal, sovereign of Goyim, and Afra, Amra, Amraphel, sovereign of Shinar, and Ariok, sovereign of Elisar, four sovereigns against five. Okay, four kings against five. And the valley of Siddim had many tar pits. And the sovereigns of Saddam and Amorah fled and fell there, and the remainder fled to the mountains. And they took all the goods of Saddam and Amorah and all their food and went away. And they took Lot, Abram's brother, brother's son, who dwelt in Saddam and his goods and left. And one, and one who had escaped came and informed Abram, the Hebrew, for, for he dwelt by the terebinth trees in Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshkol and brother of Enar. And they had a covenant with Abram. And, and when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursue as far as Dan. And he and his servants divided against them by night and struck them and pursued them as far as Heba, which is on the left of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot, his goods, as well as the women and the people. And after his return from the striking of Kedar and the sovereigns who were with him, the sovereign of Saddam came out to meet him at the valley of Shaway, that is the sovereign's valley. And Melchizedek, sovereign of Shalem, uh, brought out bread and wine. Now, he was the priest of the Most High El. He was the priest of the Most High El. So now we have one. Now we got Melchizedek, right? So we have Melchizedek. We have Abram giving, uh, you know, giving a tenth to Melchizedek, brought forth bread and wine and all that other spoils, right? Because Abram went out to rescue Lot, right? That's his, that's his blood. That's his kinsman. So he went out to rescue Lot, did all that. And then he come back and he meets the king of Salem. This is like the first mention of Melchizedek at this time, okay, who was a high priest, right? And now this one, he is not a high priest of the Levites, right? Because at this time, there, there aren't any Levites, okay? There are no Levites at this time. So that's why it's a different priesthood. And you'll see when we read later that, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, um, Yeshua. Not, not right here. And I'm not I'm talking right here. But Yeshua, he is a priest, okay? He's, a, he's our high priest, right? But he's not from Levi, right? Just like Melchizedek, he's not from, he's not from Levi, okay? So, but again, we're talking about men stepping up, okay, in different orders and different fashions, right? They're going to step up and they do the work of the Most High, right? And in, in this case, I'm talking about really talking about, you know, Abram, right? Who's showing honor to the king, who recognized, you know, who Melchizedek was. Obviously, oh, why would you just give a perfect stranger a tenth of all? Here you go. I don't know who you are, but here you go, you know. Um, so, let's go ahead and continue. We're going to move forward. Let's go to Hebrews and we will move around a little bit, right? So, we're going to go to... Hebrews or Ibrit. Okay, let's get on over there. And Hebrews is really close to um, close to uh, James. 
on which one I want Hebrews chapter 7 okay Ibrim okay chapter 7 Ibrim or Hebrews chapter 7 I'm gonna start at the very first verse if I can get this page from sticking okay so Hebrews 7 and 1 it says for this Melchizedek sovereign of Shalem priest of the most high Elohim who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns and blessed him to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all his name being translated indeed first sovereign of righteousness and then also sovereign of Shalem that is sovereign of peace right or Shalom Shalem right Salem then without father without mother without genealogy having neither beginning of days nor end of life but having been put like the son of Elohim remains a priest for all time or a priest forever right so I know they're liking it to you know they're, they're, they're liking Melchizedek to Yeshua and, and, and I get it I get it I get it okay and based off what's written right here right based off that that without father without mother uh, without genealogy having neither beginning of days nor end of life but having been said like the son of Elohim remains a priest for all times right so we know that our the Messiah is you know is a priest of forever we know he's a high advocate we know he's on the right hand of the father we know that he's the one where the father said this is my son okay um, we know that you know he says that or likens Israel as his son as well but we know that the Messiah is the first begotten right he's the first begotten okay it's like that so we got to keep that in mind so we you know we're looking at from the messiah and we're going to look at some of the other guys too right and whether it be daniel or isaiah or you know we gonna look at all those guys right so let's just keep that in mind let's go to first john or yohanan right okay and it's going to be first john or yohanan aleph which is first john and we know in the hebrew you read from right to left of course so uh what do i want there chapter two chapter two in the first two verses okay yohanan i left or first john my little children i write this to you so that you do not sin and if anyone sins we have an intercessor with the father okay yeshua messiah a righteous one and he himself is an atoning offering for our sins and not for us ours only but also for all the world okay not for us only but for also all the world because he's trying to reconcile obviously to the jew first then to the gentile but he's trying to reconcile everyone back to the father he's that he's that he's that door that's why he's called a door he's that door he's that barrier right because the father's not going to deal with sinful flesh right the father he don't want to be nowhere around it he don't want no you don't and, and and believe me now i know there's some people out there they don't care they don't want nothing to do side, but trust me you do not want to have to go before the father in the flesh you're in right now you don't want no parts of that right because he is not going to have that in his presence talking about the father he's not gonna have that in his presence okay he, he no he's he's not gonna do that okay so there's there's a barrier between you know the which is the messiah the way the truth and the light and no one goes before the father except through me because you're gonna need the messiah's righteousness to even approach the father right and some people just they don't want to believe that and i i personally i wouldn't take my chance like that i, I would not take my chances okay I, I, no, 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 no. The kind of, you know, no, 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 no. The kind of uh, sinful life that, you know, I had before I even knew, knew what the heck was going on. Before I was even awakened, right? Now, I don't make a practice of that stuff now, but I'm just talking about from back then. If I, man, if we had a Messiah, we are all done for, okay? We're, we're all done for. Because our righteousness is a filthy rags, right? The little, little, little bit of righteousness we get going is a filthy rags. Now, again, I'm not discouraging you. you. You need to keep walking in righteousness. You need to keep walking in those law, statutes, and commandments. Keep walking in righteousness, right? Because you're supposed to make a practice of it and get better and better and better and better of walking in righteousness, right? It's not a one-time, one-and-done thing. But we need this advocate before us, okay? We, we, we need that barrier. We need that door right there. We don't want that. We, we want the father to look at us through the lens of his Messiah because we be found naked. If not, if it's not for the righteousness of the Messiah, we would be found naked. 
unrighteous. But hey, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I just, all I know is thank y'all for Mashiach. That's all I can say, okay? Exodus, okay? Shemot, Shemot chapter 19. Exodus Shemot chapter 19. Okay, we're gonna bounce around a little bit, talk about other men, other great men, and also the Messiah who's playing a role as well. So 19, we're gonna read uh, three through eight. He said, and Moshe went up to Elohim and Yah called to him from the mountain saying, this is, this is what you are to say to the house of Yaakov and declare to the children of Yisrael. You have seen what I did to the Mizrites and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. And now, if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then ye shall be treasured possessions above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be to me a reign of priests, okay, and a set-apart nation, okay, kings and priests and set-apart nation, right? Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Yisrael. And Moshe came and called for the elders of the people and sat before them all the words, uh, all these words which Yah or Yahweh commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yah has spoken, we shall do. So Moshe brought back the words of the people to Yah. Okay, so he told them, Hey, we're, we're going to do this. Now, look, look, we. Did we speak too soon, right? Now, we can show in other places where they did it. We can go to Deuteronomy, they said the same thing. All he said, we're gonna do, okay? So we were charged to do all those things and we're supposed to be a treasured people, a treasured nation, a nation of kings and priests. Supposed to be that, that's, that's what we're supposed to be. So that the other nations are like, man, surely this is a wise and great nation, you know? Supposed to, supposed to, because we're supposed to show them, supposed to be a light to them, supposed to show them. And the men of the men of Yah are supposed to uh, act accordingly and supposed to teach. Now, what do we have out there today? What do we have now? Okay, what do we have? We have a bunch of Bible Nazis. We have people on going online, uh, going to complete strangers and stuff. And like, you know, I'm a teacher. I'm this, I'm that. You're supposed to listen to me and just kind of forcing their way around and all. Not everyone is apt to teach. But the true men of Yah, they can. Because the temperament is different. When you when because someone who's apt to teach, they will they they will they can adjust their approach because the point is to get them to get people to understand, get people to, 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 to let that seed get in there and then let the Holy Spirit kind of germinate and let it grow and things like that. But if you can't even get past the front door, if you can't even get them to listen to you in the first place, see that's that that that's on the teacher, right? That's that's on the teacher. Okay, in the first now, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I know that you got some prophets in there who, you know, you just try to tell Israel, you know, what's right, what's wrong, and all that, and people don't listen. I, I understand that. Okay, I, I get that. I get that. Okay, not everybody. I, I'll teach a lesson. Well, I know some people that had, hadn't even watched ten minutes of a lesson, and they already comment. No, I don't like this. I don't like that. You're wrong about this. You're wrong about. I, haven't even, I could. I can tell they hadn't even watched ten minutes of the of the lesson. I know that. Okay, I, I can see that, right? So I, I get that, okay? I'm just saying we all have different functions. That's all I'm saying. But let's get back into these men of uh, Yah. Men of Yah. Let's go back to uh, Ramayim or Romans 9. All right, what do we have here? I think I'm right here, close to it. There we go. All right, chapter 9. And just want one verse real quick. Okay, one verse, which is, and this is um, verse four. Who are the children of Yasharel? To whom is the adoption and the esteem and the covenants and the giving of the Torah and the worship and the promises? There we go. Who are we? We have all that. For what? To teach the other name? For what? To teach one another, those who are asleep, those who don't know and then to teach the other nations. I mean, that's, Israel, Israel still matters. If God cast away his people, God forbid. 
Okay, he has not cast, cast away Yisrael. He has not. We still have a job. We still have a mission. If nothing else, we are to live it. If for nothing else, we are to live it. So let's, let's keep that in mind. Okay, let's, let's keep that in mind right there. We're going to go over to Numbers. Or Waikra. Okay, so let's go to Numbers. Oh, Bob McBob, sorry, not Waikra. Leviticus, that's Leviticus. I'm going to Numbers. Okay, sorry. Mixed up my Hebrew words there. But guess what? We're going get it, to get it together. And we'll learn one another. Numbers, Bob McBob. Uh, numbers chapter one. Okay, and I'm gonna start at one. We're gonna jump around just a little bit. All right, numbers chapter one. Let me get the first five verses and then we'll jump around a little bit. And Yah spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai in the tenth of appointment on the first day to the second new moon. In the second year after they had come out of the land of Mitzrayim, saying, take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel by their clans, by their father's houses, according to the number of names, every male head by head. From 20 years old and above, everyone going out to the army of Israel, number them by their divisions, you and Aharam. Aharam. And a man from every tribe should be with you, each one the head of his father's house. And, there, and these are the names of the men who stand with you from Reuben, uh, Elzer's son, uh, Shediar, right? So, what, so now it goes to the names, right, of each tribe. So we're going to skip down. This just goes through each name, right? So we're just going to skip down and go to verse, uh, let's skip down to uh, 15. And from Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enan. These are the ones called from the congregation, leaders of their father's tribes, heads of thousands of Israel. And Moshe and Aharam took these men who were called by name. And they assembled all the congregation together in the first day of the second new moon. And they declared their ancestry by their clans, by their father's houses, according to the number of names and 20 years old and above each one head by head. Because that's really, you know, that's that's what this is when they're saying, you know, you are what your father is. Right. So if your father is Israelite, you're an Israelite. OK, regardless of the outward appearance and stuff. And this is some of the stuff where they get that from. But that's just a quick aside or whatever. But yeah, they were we are reckoned according to our father's house. We are reckoned according to the patriarchy. OK, that's what that's how we are reckoned. All right. So that's how we, we get that. So we're going to skip down a little bit. I read to 19 and now I'm going to jump down to 44. OK, so 44. And it says these were those registered whom Moshe and Aharam registered with the leaders of Israel, 12 men, each one for his father's house, because that's how we are reckoned. And I actually I'm actually encouraging you because I know a lot of you don't have the scriptures version. And that's fine. You don't have to have it. You go through your King James, but I want you to be able to uh, follow along and you can hear some of the differences and see if there's some subtle changes in, uh, uh, in meaning or anything like that. Right. So because it helps when we go back to, you know, the Hebrew and so that 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 they trend. So nothing, the information does not get lost in any translation. Right. So I'm not saying, oh, well, the King James version is no good. Of course, I still have the King James and I'll still be reading out of the King James. Right. But sometimes, you know, I just want to switch it up here every now and again uh, for you guys. Right. So we just did 44, 45. And all those that were registered under the children of Yisrael by the father's house from 20 years old and above, everyone going out to the army of Yisrael. All those that were registered were 603,550. But the Levites were not registered among them by their father's tribe. So the Levites are not there. I mean, not numbered because they're not going to go out there and, and, and fight. Because Yah had spoken to Moshe saying, only the tribe of Lawai, you do not register, nor take a census of them among the children of Israel. Instead, appoint the Lawites over the dwelling place of the witness, over all its furnishings and over all the, uh, that belongs to it. They bear the dwelling place and all uh, its furnishings, and they attend to it and camp 
around the dwelling place all right so they're going to take care of the tabernacle and and in the uh you know the places of you know worship and things like that they're going to take care of that they're not going to go out to war and when the dwelling place is to go forward and levites take it down and when the dwelling place is to be set up the levites to set it up see they build up the place of worship and they tear it down move around stuff like that and the strangers who come near is put to death all right so don't strangers are not to come near that place right and then and the children of Israel shall pitch their tents everyone by his own camp everyone by his own banner according to their divisions right according to their tribe right it says but let the Levites camp around the dwelling place of the witness okay so that there be no wrath on the congregation of the children of Israel so do this right so nobody gets hurt and the Levites shall guard the duty of the dwelling place of witness all right this is their job to do this right and the children of Israel did according to all that Yah commanded Moshe so they did okay very smart very wise to do that because because we already know that, you know, the Most High does not play. He wants something done. He wants it done correctly. He wants it done according to how he says it, right? His way or hell way, okay? That's that's just how the Most High is, okay? So that's just how that is, okay? So we did that. Now we're going to go ahead, go back to Exodus and back up a little bit. And we're going to go to um, 40, Exodus 40. Okay, Shemot, Exodus 40, let's see what we have here, and when we get there, I'm going to start at verse 9, okay, start at verse 9, I'm going to do 9 to 15, 9, it says, and, it, and, and shall take the anointing oil and anoint the dwelling places and all that is in it, and shall set it in all its utensils part, apart, and it shall be set apart. And you shall anoint the slaughter place of the ascending offering and all its utensils and set the slaughter place apart. And the slaughter place shall be most set apart, right? It should be most holy. This is called a slaughter place because that's what priests were. The Levites were basically butchers, right? They just, they just butchered, you know, animals for sacrifices, right? So that's why it's called that. And you shall anoint the basin and its stand and set it apart. And it shall bring Aharam and his sons to the door of the tent of appointment and wash them with water. And you shall put the set apart garments on Aharam and anoint him and set him apart to serve as priest to me. And you shall bring his sons and put long shirts on them, put their, their, their garments, the holy garments, right? 15. And shall anoint them as you anointed their father and they shall serve as priests to me. And their anointing shall be for them an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations, throughout their generations. Right. So he already said he, he, he when he set it up, this is this is going to be your job. I've chosen you. This is going to be your job. This is what you're going to do. OK, so Levites, they didn't have a choice. This is this, this is what you do. This is this. This is your job. You're going to serve me in the high places. You're going to serve me in the assembly. You're going to serve me at the tabernacle. OK, you're going to serve me in the slaughter places. Right. And you're going to be set apart okay you're going to put on fresh linens and you're going to wear priestly garments and you're going to do the offices of the priesthood that's what you're going to do all right that's fine we we need that we need the prophets we need the pre we need all that okay i know we, no we don't have that today we don't you know offer sacrifices today but you get what i'm saying we need all that okay these are great men they had they had to do a great great service okay we, they had to do a great, great service, right? So they say that as, as much as we belittle, you know, um, Israel's disobedience and their fall and things like that, as much as we believe that, we got to understand they also saved a whole lot of Israelites too through their obedience to the Most High. They also, because if they didn't, we wouldn't be here, right? There would be no Israelites, okay? So some of them did some things right. Some of them, have it, they had a good report, okay? Some of them. OK, and so we, we, we're going to focus on that because it's real easy to focus on where they messed up and they went astray. We want to focus on with these men when they did something right, when they when they when they was called and they got their duty and they went forth and they did what thus says the Lord and try to proclaim it to the rest of Israel. OK, so let's let's keep going. So that's Exodus. Uh, what is that? Exodus 40. So let's go to Leviticus 4. OK. Now we in Raikra 4, Leviticus 4. Let me 
Why you cry? Four. And when I get there, start at the first one actually. Start at verse one. Okay, there's a lot of ground to cover. Verse one. And Yah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, When a being sins by mistake against any of the commandments of Yah, which are not to be done, and shall do any of them, if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, then he shall bring to Yah for his sins, which he has sinned a young bull, a perfect one, as a sin offering. And he shall bring the bull to the door of the tent of appointment before Yah, and shall lay his hand on the bull's head and slay the bull before Yah. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And the anointed priest shall take one some of the bull's blood and bring it to the tent of appointments. And the priest shall dip his fingers in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before Yah, in front of the veil of the set apart place, of the holy place, right? And then seven. And the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the slaughter place of the sweet incense before Yah, which is in the tent of appointments, and pour all the blood at the base of the slaughter place as an ascending offer, which is at the door of the tent of appointments, right? So he takes some of the blood, put his fingers in there, and sprinkle it seven times, right? And then you take the rest of the blood, put it on the horn, and he's pouring it, right? <clears throat> Right there, so we have, right, we went to four, uh, back at seven, he said, which is the tent of appointments and pour all of the blood of the bull at the base of the slaughter place of the ascending offering, which is at the door of the tent of meeting. So the rest of it is going to pour that at the base, like it says, right? So again, this, this is how it was done, right? This is how it was done. Okay, so we're going to keep on going. Go back to numbers. Okay, so Bam Bamikbar, let's see here, eighteen. Okay, eighteen, we're gonna start at one. Bamikbar eighteen, we're gonna start at one. And Yah said unto uh, said to Aharon, You and your sons and your father's house with you are to bear the crookedness against the set apart place. And you and your sons with you are to bear the crookedness against your priesthood. But bring you, bring with you your brothers of the tribe of Lawai too, the tribe of your fathers to join you and serve you while you and your sons are with you before the tent of witness. And they shall guard your charge and the duty of all the tent. But they do not come near the furnishings of the set apart place and the slaughter place, lest they die, both they and you. And they shall be joined with you and guard the duty of the tent of appointments for all the service of the tent. But a stranger does not come near you. Mm, set uh, That's holy. Set apart, right? And you shall guard the duty of the set apart place and the duties of the slaughter place so that there be, n there be no more wrath on the children of Israel. So you have to do this correctly or we will get hurt. Okay? The big hurt. And see, I myself have taking your brothers, the Levites, from the midst of the children of Israel, a gift to you, given by Yah, to do the service of the tent of appointments. He's like, it's an honor to serve the Most High, right? But you and your sons with you are to guard your priesthood for, for all matters at the slaughter place and behind the veil, and ye shall serve. I have given you, given you the priesthood as a gift for service, but the strangers who come near is put to death. So that's it. No one else. Okay, no one else. You only the Levites have the office of the priesthood like this, right? Only the Levites. Okay, we're not talking about Melchizedek or anything like that because he's not a Levite, right? And that's, that's a different uh, type of office. Okay, and then uh, and then verse eight, and Yah spoke to Aharon and and see, I myself have given have also given you the charge of my contributions. All the set apart gifts of the children of Israel, I have given them to you for the anointing and to your sons as a law forever. So tithes and offering that goes to Levi, right? 
uh, the, the actual tithes, okay? You can offer, you know, love, I mean, offerings and stuff like that's cool. But the tithe, the actual tithe goes to Levi, right? Because they didn't have any land inheritance, okay? And 10, eat it in the most set apart place. Every male, <clears throat> every male eats it. It is set apart to you, okay? It is holy to you, okay? So what we're going to do, since we're in Numbers 18, we're going to skip and go to 20, Get down and go to 20, 20 to 24. 20. And Yah said to uh, Aharon, you are not to have an inheritance in their land, nor have any portion in their midst. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. I am your portion and your inheritance among the children of Israel. And see, I have given the children of Lewi all the tribes in Israel as an inheritance in return for the service which they are serving, uh, the service of the tent of appointments. And let the children of Israel no more come near the tent of appointments, lest they bear sin and die. It's going to be on them and they die, right? So only the Levites. It don't, it don't even matter if you're Israelite, right? If you're not from Levi, you, you can't do this type of service. You can't do sacrifices and stuff like that. Only a priest. And again, we're talking about at this time, right? You cannot do it or you die. Okay. <clears throat> so we're on 23. Because the Levites shall do the service of the tent of appointments, so so they themselves bear their crookedness, a law forever throughout your generations, that among the children of Israel they are to have no inheritance. Okay? Talking about land and whatnot. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they present as a contribution to Yah, I have given it to the Levites as an inheritance. That is why I have said to them among the children of Israel, they have no inheritance because they didn't, they didn't get the land, but they do get uh, all the tithes. Right. That's how they sustain themselves. Right. So um, the 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 office of the priesthood. Remember, there was a time where Israel, they, they, they dwell together. Right. But they had certain territories to each tribe. Right. And in each tribe, there was some Levites among them to perform the office of the priesthood, the duties of the priests, right? So among them, among their land. So there was not Levi land over here. There was not that, okay? It was Levi peppered throughout the other 11 tribes, right? To do their duties, right? In service to the Most High. So, okay, so we want to just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to keep going. At the numbers, we're going to go back to... Leviticus, we're going to do 10, Leviticus chapter 10, okay, and when we get to 10, verse, verse 11, right, Leviticus 10, we're going to do verse 11, and Yah spoke to Moshe saying, make two silver trumpets for yourself, make them of beaten work, and you shall use them for the gathering of the congregation and for breaking camp. And when they blow both of them, all the congregation shall meet before you at the door of the tent of appointment. And if they blow one, then the leaders and the heads of the thousands of Israel shall gather to you. And when ye blow a shout, the camps that lie of the east side shall depart. And when you blow a shout to the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall depart. They blow a shout for them to depart. And when the assembly is to be assembled, you blow, but do not shout. And the sons of Aharam, the priests, blow with the trumpets, and it shall be to you for a law forever throughout your generations. And when you go into battle in your land against the enemies that distresses you, then ye, ye shall shout with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before Yah, your Elohim. And ye shall be saved from your enemies. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, let me go to all the way to 11. So 10. And in the day of your gladness and in your appointed times and at the beginning of your new moons or new month, ye shall blow the trumpets over your ascending offerings and over your slaughterings of peace offerings. And they shall be a remembrance for you before your Elohim and I am Yah, your Elohim. OK. Verse 11. And it came to be on the 20th day of the second new moon in the second year that the cloud was taken up from above the dwelling place of the wilderness. OK, so we so, so we get the idea there. OK, so again, these the leave the priests they had. We, I, I, I wanted to point out to show you what what are all the things that the priests had to do. Right. 
Okay, they did the blowing of the trumpets, they did the assembling, they offered the sacrifice, so on and so on and forth. They had to do it. Okay, they had to do it. This is this is this is a good thing actually. Okay, this is a good thing. Okay, we don't want some people that you know they like to write off the Old Testament as weak and beggarly, and we don't have to do that and all that other stuff. I understand we don't have to offer sacrifice. I get it, but we still need to understand what some of our ancestors had to do. What what are some of the things that they had to do? Let's not be ignorant in these things, right? Let's take a look and see what did they have to do. What was expected of them, right? So I like looking at it to get more details, so we can you know so that we can get it in our minds. And understand, you know, just how serious it was and, 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 and what they had to do pretty much all the time. Every week they were doing something like this, right? Every week, okay? I'm not talking about the feast days. I'm just talking about offering sacrifices and things like that, right? So they had to do this all the time, okay? Let's just keep that in mind all the time. So let's go back to Hebrews, okay? Okay. Go back to Hebrews, and I want to go to chapter 7, and let me read, let's read 3 through 8, okay? All right, so 3, we'll go back to 3, right? It says, without without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of, uh, beginning of days nor end of life, but having been made like the son of Elohim, remains a priest for all times, right? Now, see how great this one was. To whom even the ancestor Abraham gave a tenth of the choicest booty, right? And truly, those who are the sons of Lewi, who received the priesthood, have a command to receive tithes from the people according to the Torah, that is, from their brothers, though they have come from the loins of Abraham, right? So he's just saying, what was the priest, you know, what was it like before the fact, right? Before that. However, the one whose genealogy is not derived from them receives tithes from Abraham, right? Who's before that, there was no Levi, right? It was uh, Melchizedek, right? And blessed the one who held the promises, which was Abraham. And it is beyond all dispute that the lesser is blessed by the better, okay? And here, here it is, men who died um, that received tithes, but there it is someone of whom it is witness that he lives, okay? Okay, so we have that, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and so we're comparing the Levitical priesthood and the Melchizedek priesthood, right? Just kind of, he's kind of comparing uh, the writer of Hebrew. They're just kind of trying to compare both of those, right? So let's keep going so we can kind of walk this thing down, okay? Let's go to Galatians. So we can find this real quick. Okay, go to uh, what chapter? We went? Three. Okay, Galatians three, and we'll start at nineteen, nineteen to twenty-four. So three, starting at nineteen. It says, "Why then the Torah?" Okay, so why do that? Why then the Torah? It was added because of transgressions. Okay, until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained through messengers in the hand of a mediator. The mediator, however, is not of one, but Elohim is one. Is the Torah then against the promises of Elohim? Let it not be. For if a Torah had been given that was able to make alive, truly righteousness would have been by the Torah, right? But scriptures has shut up all mankind under sin, right? So it's concluded that we all, we all messed up according to, this, uh, according to Torah, right? That the promise by belief in Yeshua, Messiah, might be given to those who believe, right? Because you already messed up, okay? Because you, you already messed up, you already broke the commandments, you broke one, you broke them all, that type of thing, because you already done that, is because of faith. So in order for us to get life or eternal life is be through our faith, believing on and calling upon the Messiah is how you're going to do it because you're not going to be able to do it uh, with Torah keeping alone, right? That's that's not going to cut it because you're already broken, right? Okay. And 23. But before belief came, we were being guarded under Torah, having been shut up for the belief being about to be revealed, right? Therefore, the Torah became our trainer or schoolmaster unto Messiah in order to be declared right, right by belief through faith, right by belief so that we can be declared right by that. Now, do we get rid of it? Do we just not do it anymore? No, that, no, that does not 
that doesn't go with that. So let me read 24 again. Therefore, the Torah became our trainer unto Messiah in order to be declared to be declared right by belief or faith. Right. So that's that's how we have to do it. Right. Because it was neat. Uh, you know, he says, I'm going to have a new covenant. OK, he already says I'm going to make a new covenant with the house. And then the Messiah is a part of that new covenant. Now, many in the first century, they didn't believe that. They don't believe in Messiah. No, not this. Because we already have in our mind he's going to come a particular way. Right. And that the first time he's come, he's coming to take over and, you know, give. But we see that didn't happen. Right. But because that didn't happen, many believe that then he's not the Messiah. Right. But the sacrifice had to be made first. And that's what he did. The sacrifice, the cleaning up, the ability for us to put off, you know, these these sins or have it not accounted against us. Right. That had to come first. That debt had to be made first. All right. So we had to be made right there in that in that advent because we look at other messiahs and, think, you know, we'll just be savior. Right. We look at others and they say, you know, physically. But this why this one is done, because it's a once and for all type of thing. Right. Once and for all type of thing. I paid the price. It's over. The debt is cleared. It's paid. But now we have to go forth and what? Sin no more. Right. So we're just going to keep going to keep going. It's in Galatians. We're going to go back to Hebrews. All right, let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews, and we're going to go to chapter 7 right here. So let's start at 11. We're going to read 11 and 12, and then we'll move around to 21. So 11. Truly, then, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people were given the Torah, why was there still need for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aharon? For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. Okay, doesn't mean that those laws... Uh, are done away with you already know if you've been watching this ministry we don't preach that the law has been uh done away with because it hasn't been done away with right but he's just saying it moved from the levitical priesthood it moved to more of the melchizedek order priesthood like before leviticus came it just moved from there to there okay it still falls under the new cut or renewed covenant right ratified by the animals sprinkling of the blood and, and, and slaughtering and all that right but now under the order of melchizedek now that right there <clears throat> When you come the what I was talking about with the slaughtering, the sprinkling of the blood and all that, that was under Levitical priesthood, right? But now if you're talking about under the Melchizedek, okay, still same laws, okay, same laws, okay, except for the sacrifice is the Messiah himself. He's both the sacrifice and the high priest at the same time, offering up himself. I offer to the Father myself, kind of thing. And then he's been accepted. Okay, he's ascended, he's been accepted, he's at the right hand. Okay. So that one is once and for all right because he still say if you love me keep my commandments right that you know um and hereby we know that we know him or love him that we keep his commandment okay Th those kind of things right so all that's still in place okay it's just that where it was before has changed it's not on uh tables of stone it is in your heart right now okay that type of thing you're still supposed to do it still supposed to love it still supposed to guard it supposed to guard that covenant that's what we're supposed to do okay this is what is expected of us. So we're Hebrews. Okay, we're going to jump to 21 and read 21 to 25. 21 reads, For they indeed became priests without an oath, but he became priests with an oath by him who said to him, Yah has sworn and shall not regret. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. By as much as this Yahushua has become a grantor of a better covenant and indeed those that became priests were many because they were prevented by death from continuing okay so death caused them that that to stop so they cut off that Levit that that Leviticus uh, priesthood thing but we'll, we'll get more into it but he because he remains forever has an unchangeable priesthood, right? Because he's he died as a sacrifice, but he lives forever and more, okay, as the high priest. Okay, therefore, he is also able to save completely those who draw near to Elohim through him, 
ever living to make intercessions for them okay so so he's there like i said he's he's there he's the living we serve a living god the high priest who's there right now okay he 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 offered himself and he's there with the father right now okay so we're just going to keep going we're going to keep it pushing okay we are in hebrews 7 right now so let's go to amos Three and seven. Okay, Amos chapter three, just one verse. For the master Yah does not make does not matter unless he reveals his secret uh, to his servants, the prophets. Okay, does no matter. I'm sorry, he says does no matter. Right, so he just basically he reveals he's not going to do anything unless he tells it to his servants, the prophets. Right, so we're going to kind of get into that a little bit. Right. So let's get into that. Okay, so should be okay. So first Samuel or the Hebrew is Shemuel Aleph. All right, and we're gonna start at chapter nine. Shemuel Aleph or First Samuel. Chapter nine, and I get there. I'm gonna start at verse nine. Nine. We're gonna do nine through seventeen. Formerly, formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of Elohim, he spoke thus: Come, let us go to the seer. For the prophet of today was formerly called a seer, right? And Shaul said to his servant, Your word is good. Come, let us go. He said, Yeah, that's a good idea. So let's go. And they went to the city where the man of Elohim was. As as they went up to the hill to the city, they met some young women going out to draw water and said to them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is. Look, ahead of you. Hurry now, for the for he came to the city today, and for the people have a slaughtering on the high place today. So they gonna offer a sacrifice and they want uh, Samuel to do it, right? And uh, let's see, uh, to 17, so 13. As you come into the city, you are going to find him before, before he goes up to the high place to eat. For the people do not eat until he comes, for he blesses the slaughtering, and afterwards they who are invited eat. And now go up for you should find him about this time. And they went up to the city, and they were coming into the midst of the city and saw Shemuel coming out towards them to go up to the high place. And Yah had revealed to Shemuel in his ear the day before Shaul came, saying, At this time tomorrow I shall send you a man from the land of Benjamin, okay, Benjamin, and you shall anoint him leader over my people, Israel, and you shall save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have seen my people because their cry has come to me. And when Shemuel saw Shaul, Yah said to him, See, the man of whom I spoke to you, let this one govern my people. Okay, we're starting to get this. Let this one do. So this is when he are, he picks he picked a king. Okay. The most high had already he, he picked a king. He told Samuel, This is the guy who I want you to anoint and make him king over the people. He's gonna he's gonna run gonna run things, right? So again, Samuel being obedient, he did it. Okay, it's that simple. Samuel being obedient, he did it. Which is which is good, which is a good thing. So again, that's that's another mark. That's another mark of a man of Yah. Okay, the number one mark of a man of Yah is that he obeys Yah. Period. That's that's number one. That's the number one mark of a man of Yah that he obeys Yah, right? And that he trusts him, right? He obeys him, he trusts him. You no, know, he humbles himself. All those other I can name all other little you know things that they can do, but number one, he obeys him. He hears him and obeys him. Okay. Number that's the number one thing right there. So we're gonna go over to Luke. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, Luke. There we go. So Luke twenty, chapter twenty. Okay. Lucos, Lucos. All right. Luke chapter 20, we're going to read 9 through 18. 
and 9, it says, And he began to speak this parable to the people. A certain man planted a vineyard and leased it to the farmers and went away for a long time. And at harvest time, he sent a servant uh, to the farmers to give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the farmers beat him and sent him away empty handed. And again, he sent another servant and they beat him too and maltreated him and sent him away empty handed. And again, he sent a third and they wounded him too and cast him out. And the owner of the vineyard said, what shall I do? I shall send my son, the beloved, and they might respect him when they see him. But when the farmer saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him so that the inheritance becomes ours. And they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then shall the owner of the vineyard do to them? Right. So look, look, look at does this sound familiar? 16. And he he shall come and destroy those farmers and give the vineyard to others. And having heard, they said, let it not be or God forbid. But he looked at them and said, what then is this that has been written? The stone which the builders reject has become the chief cornerstone. Right. And 18. And everyone who falls on this stone shall be broken. But but on whomever it falls, he shall be pulverized or crushed to powder, right? He shall be pulverized. You come against it because you're going to have people, they're going to come against the Messiah. They're going to come against that and it's not going to work out. So when, when we look at it, we saw over in the first century, that's what it is. We, when, when the apostles, when the disciples, when Paul and all them start preaching, you know, um, um, Mashiach, right? When they start preaching that, oh, they get nothing but a bunch of rejection. Nothing but rejection. Right. Don't come over here with that old Messiah stuff. We don't know. No, that ain't him. That no, with a, none of that. Right. So that's what they're going to get. People are getting killed for it. I mean, look at Stephen. He made he, he preached one sermon. He got killed for it. Right. He, pre, he preached one message and got killed for it. Because that's what that's what Israel does. That's that's what they do. OK. Unfortunately, that's what we do. OK. So the one the, the, the main person who you're stepping on, this main person whom you are rejecting is the chief cornerstone is the main one you should build a, your foundation on the main one you're rejecting. But the prophet says you're going to do that. But the, and, and it's no different. It's, it is no different. OK, it's no different. They killed the prophets and stuff back then. They killed them in the first century and they ain't going to listen to. And in some cases may kill some of them now. Right. And we don't have a lot of prophets uh, today. You know, not, the Lord's not talking to a whole lot of people. OK, but um, like that, like he did the prophets, not like that. I'm not saying there are no prophets. I'm not saying that there are, but it's not a lot. OK, so we got to keep that. You know, we got to keep that in mind. It does not matter. Israel is a stiff neck, hard hearted, don't want to listen. It don't matter which century in the century that we are in. The story is the same when it comes to Israel. Same people. We are just like our fathers, unfortunately. It's our job. It's our duty to try to do a little bit better. But for the most part, we're, we're just like our fathers. We are. We're, we're just like them. Real quick to reject someone. Real quick to get stiff-necked and arrogant and high-minded. It's so easy. Many of us slip into it all the time. So easy. So easy. I mean, it's it happens all the time on a daily. Okay, let's go. Let's keep going. Let's go um, Isaiah. Okay. Yeshayahu, Yeshayahu, Isaiah, Yeshayahu uh, 5, right? We'll go 5 and I want to read first four verses. Please let me sing to the one I love. A song for my loved one regarding his vineyard. My loved one has a vineyard on a fertile hill. And he dug it up and declared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vine and built a hot watchtower in the midst and also made a wine press in it. And he waited for the yielding of grapes, but it yielded rotten ones. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Yerushalayim and man of Yehuda, please judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why, when I waited for the yielding of grapes, did it yield rotten ones? And now, please let me inform you what I am doing to my vineyard. OK, so <clears throat> I don't want to get into what he's going to do, because that's we already know he's going to pluck it up, burn it down and all that. Right. 
But he basically saying, what more could I have done? I got the vineyard. I did. And look at look, look what Israel should be. Okay, look at what Yasharah should be. Right, choice vine vineyard. First of all, I put you in the best places. Okay, I I put you in the land flowing with milk and honey, and guarded it, protected it, let you flourish and grow. Okay, let you have all that. Let the fruit of your body go ahead and flourish and grow took care of you. Enemies come against you. I protect you. You're hungry. You're, you, you, you got fertile ground to live on. You have a prime suspect. You're at the headquarters, okay? You're Jerusalem in, the, in, in roundabout, right? You, you got prime, prime real estate. You have everything. You have the oracles. You have the oracles of God, the word of God. You have Torah and you have law. I give you prophets. Give you everything. I give you a king. I give you kings when you want it. I give you prophets. And look, I still get rotten grapes. I still get wild grapes. What more could I have done? What more could you want? I gave you everything you wanted. You wanted to be out of bondage. I took you out of bondage. You wanted a leader, someone to guide you. I gave you that. Been giving you prophets. Been, been giving you that. Wanted your own land, gave you that too. Gave you riches and wealth, gave you food. Agriculture and call, talk, every, every, what more, this is most high, what more could I have done? I've done everything and still I get rotten grapes. After all that I've done, I still get rotten grapes rotten grapes right so he's like how is this even how is why is this even happening right so let's go to jeremiah right let's go to jeremiah and i get to jeremiah we'll go to 12 okay yeri mayu right jeremiah yeri mayu 12. okay when i get there I'm going to read 10 through 13. And it says, Many shepherds have destroyed my vineyard, and they have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion become a deserted wilderness. They have laid it to waste. A waste, and mour a waste mourns to me. All the land is laid waste because no one, makes, no one takes it to heart. The ravagers have come on all the bare heights in the wilderness, for the sword of Yah is devouring from one end of the land to the other end of the land. There is no peace to any flesh, right? A lot of bad things happening. 13. And they have sown wheat, but reaped thorns. And they have exhausted themselves, but and they do not profit. And they shall be ashamed of their harvest because of the burning displeasure of Yah. All right? They, they, they... Most High is not well pleased as to far as far as what has happened, as far as what has happened to, to Israel, because a lot of the fall has to do with wicked or unrighteous prophets, priests, pastors, all that, right? So a lot of the fall is because of the leaders who are supposed to be delivering Israel the word of God, who's supposed to be telling them what thus says the Lord, were not doing. They were derelict in duties. They, they just said, they gave you nice, fantastic little stories and stuff like that, made you feel good and to pat you on the back and let you get on about your way, right? This is not what the Most High wanted, right? So people were just going off and doing things in their own mind and just thought, hey, hey, this what's, I, I, I got the blessing uh, from the pastor. The prophet told me, you know, the false ones, the false ones, right? The false pastor, he told me this. The false prophet, he told me this, all right? I'm not talking about all of them, I'm talking about the false ones. That's why. That's, that's why a lot of them came out wild, because everything was choice, but then the people that they were listening to was misleading them, not guiding them, actually leading them astray, leading them off the path. And that's the problem. That's that's the thing we have to remember. Right. So we're going to keep going. All right. We'll start trying to, you know, wrap it up a little bit. I got a lot of scriptures that we won't be able to get to uh, right now, but we are going to let's see here. No, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping it up there. I got a little bit more and we'll back up a little bit more uh, and, and we'll get back to this in a second. OK, but we'll wrap it up. So this will be part one. We're going to go ahead and make this in a two parter. 
and um, we'll get back to it, right? And we're going to pick up, we're going to back up maybe two, three verses and then continue on, okay? So again, we're just talking about the men of Yah, the few, the few, the proud, the men of Yah, right? So this is what this is what needs to be heard, like the, the men, of, what they had to do, what they had to deal with, what they had to um, uh, put up with. Because a lot of people, we get high-minded and we think that we would have done things so much differently and all that. No, we, we're just like it. OK, we have some hard headed, stubborn, stiff neck Israelites right now. Right. We had them then. We have them now. OK. We had some people reject the word of God. Then we have it now. Some of them, they commit adultery back then. Idolatry. We have it now. OK, whether it be adultery or idolatry or whatever. We we had it back then. We have it now. What is different? You tell me what is different. Right. And I'm talking about, you know, just stiff neck Israel, right? I'm not talking about our great men. I'm not talking about, you know, Isaiah or Jeremiah or Daniel. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking about them. They're, they're fine. Okay, they're fine. I'm talking about stiff neck Israel. It doesn't matter. It seems like it doesn't even matter whom the Most High put in front of the nation of Israel. People who are crying out saying, let's get this thing together. Let's get back under covenant with the Most High God. Let's get back in line. Let's cry out to him. Let's do this. But no, we can't even put our differences aside. We can't even work together. We can't listen to any of that. Because we can't do it. We don't want to listen to anything. We are sovereign all to ourselves. And that's fine. Until. Until the Messiah comes back. Now, are you going to be sovereign all to yourself then? Are you going to march to your uh, the beat of your own drum then when the Messiah comes back? Is it going to be that? You can be off to, off to yourself and now y'all y'all just do all you know y'all do that I'm I'm good right here is is that what's what's it gonna be? See, it's one of those things that we, we all need to take a you know some self inventory. We all need to kind of dig inside, get inside, and be like, okay, what's up with me? Because we're too busy with what's wrong with everybody else, right? So let's we got to take a look inside. That that is what the responsibility is. That that's what it is when it comes to, uh, to our free will. That's what it comes to. Are you going to elect to say, you know what? Let me humble myself. Let me see if I can work with one another. See if we can edify one another. See if we can build together. See if we can do those type of things. In the kingdom, is it going to be like a party of one? I know I, I know, I, I spoke about this a little bit in other lessons, but I'm just saying, like, is it going to really be a party of one? Because I know personally it can be very, very hard working with Israel. I know. I know. But I still believe that it's necessary. I still believe that it is necessary that we're able to work together. Because the kingdom is a big community of other believers. So, this has been part one of the men of Yah. Join me for part two. In the meantime, I hope somebody has been edified by this lesson. And so until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things. Shalom, Israel.